here comes the fuzz. Welcome to my review of the 2014 horror action comedy Wolf Cop. I love this movie. This movie was awesome. Wolf Cop was badass. It was one of my favorite films of the year. Very, very entertaining. It's 79 minutes. It goes by real quick. It's got great pacing. It's got a good sense of humor. It's got some really standout, great practical effects for such a low budget. This is a really fun movie. And um, it's right up my alley. I mean, this is a type of movie that might not be everybody's cup, everybody's cup of tea, though. It's a movie that has that 80s charm. And what I mean by 80s charm, it has a, it, 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 it has its tongue firmly in its left cheek. It has a lot of fun with its concepts. It throws in some one-liners here and there. It, it, uh, it isn't afraid to have fun. That's what I mean by 80s charm. A lot of people, since they don't like 80s charm and they don't find it very charming, they call it cheesy. Which is why I'm, I'm not using that word. I hate that word. It's my number one most hated word uh, lately because it's used way too much just to bad mouth movies like this. It's got charm. It's got undeniable, undisputed 80s charm. And if you're a fan of that type of film, if you're a fan of like Frank Hanelotter's movies, if you're a fan of Sam Raimi's early work, if you're a fan of Peter Jackson's early work, I think you might really enjoy this film. If if uh, I I mean if you are a fan of this type of film those type of films I do recommend this I do recommend you check out Wolf Cop so I actually will I mean I'm trying not to do too many spoilers because uh, there's just so many cra there's a lot of craziness in this and it's a lot of fun so anyway the film is directed by Lowell Dean he also wrote the screenplay and it stars Leo Fofford as Lou slash the Wolf Cop, and I thought Leo Fofford did a really good job as as uh, as Lou and the Wolf Cop, Lou Garou, which is definitely a reference to uh, you know a little tongue in cheek reference to werewolves because Garou was actually used for a werewolf term uh, back in the Middle Ages, I believe. And Amy my Ma my Ma Ma Matiasso is Tina, his partner, and Jonathan Cherry plays Willie, who I really like this character. He was a lot of fun. He had some really fun lines of dialogue. And it was kind of too bad when I found that he was a bad guy, but then it, it didn't really bother me because it focused more on his real partner was uh, Tina. Uh, Lou's partner, real partner was Tina, and never this guy. So, but he was, he was basically, he, was, he, he looks like, he looks like, um, oh, what's his name? You know, my name is Earl, like Earl, Jason Scott Lee. He looks like, J not Jason Scott Lee. That's that's a diff Jason Lee. I think I think it's Jason Lee, right? It's Jason Lee. Okay, he's got this. My he's got this Earl for my name is Earl. Look, Jason Scott Lee, and um, he's got some fun lines of dialogue. He's a fun character, and uh, Sarah Lynn plays Jessica. She's really hot, <laughs> really really hot. But you find out that she's like uh, actually not who she not who she displays herself as. She's actually one of the shapeshifters. Because the plot had this, I thought this plot had a pretty cool idea. Basically what happens is, um, oh, Jesse Moss is also in this. Oh, Jesse Moss, he was, he was in, uh, uh, he was in, uh, Extraterrestrial. Hey, he played Seth. So he plays, he plays a gang leader in this. Okay. I almost didn't even, I didn't even recognize him. Wow. Uh, but anyway, um, pretty much the plot is this. Lou Garou plays a cop. Uh, Lou, Lou Garou is a cop uh, played by um, Leo Fofford and, or Fafard. And he pretty much, he's, he's an alcoholic. He's down in his luck. And because he's dealing, he's, what happened is his father died a while back when he was young. And he was murdered or whatever. And ultimately, you find out through the course of the film that his father's death ties into with the whole thing that's going on in this town. And it's this town where... I'm trying to remember the name of the town. I don't really remember... It because there's really not a lot of... Um, Wikipedia doesn't even have really a uh, in-depth synopsis of the film. So... Say it's like a small town somewhere in Canada because this film was shot in Canada on a budget of like one million CAD, 
which I don't know how much that is U US dollars but it must not be much and um, so pretty much what happens is throughout the whole film you find a little bit of this mystery that there's this annual drink and shoot that was canceled and then you find out that there it coincides with this lunar eclipse and so you figure out that there's this tradition every 25 years or so where the towns what happens is somebody gets turned into a werewolf on purpose so they can be sacrificed at the lunar eclipse so these shapeshifters can uh, remain living which I thought was actually a pretty cool idea and so Lou Guru ends up getting sucked up into all of this and he becomes a werewolf but he's unlike the other werewolves because he's a cop and uh, so the film there's a lot of enjoyable fun moments where when Lou Guru becomes a werewolf like when he first becomes a werewolf some really great makeup effects and really kind of shocking stuff like he literally just goes in the bathroom he's got to take a piss and it, 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 literally what happens is I really like the, the transformation effects in this because it's different than the norm he doesn't like morph into the wolf what happens is the wolf tears out of him like um like the 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 way that Freddy uh, became, you know, basically took over Jesse in Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, it, it's like that. So like he's he's taking a piss and he starts bleed, he's pissing blood, and you're like holy shit! And then like a wolf dick just rips through his dick while he's peeing, and it's like an absolutely crazy ass scene. And then you know, great practical too for such a low budget. Definitely a throwback film to the 80s. As we're saying, it's got that 80s charm to it. And, you know, the wolf j just rips right through his skin. And even his face falls off. And there's the wolf face. It, 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 it's not very logical, but it doesn't matter to me. It's such a really cool effect. So then he goes in and just fucks up these guys just trying to uh, rob the bar that he was at. Decapitates this one guy. Fucking claws one dude's face. And goes off in the night. And then he wakes up and he's he's handcuffed to his bed with these frilly, uh, frilly, you know, kind of, uh, you know, those type of handcuffs are like pink with the fuzzy pink handcuffs. And he's like, what the hell? And there's a dog sitting next to his dog. And he's like, I'm like, what did I do last night? Oh, God, I have such a, I have a hangover. And I also like the idea, too. This is a nice little touch where after he gets the, he gets, basically what happens is he becomes a wolf because he goes and checks out a disturbance in, in, in a wooded area. He gets knocked out. And by these people in masks, and then he wakes up, and he lifts up his shirt. He's got a pentagram symbol in in his uh, chest, and he tries to shave because he's got you know five o'clock shadow type thing going on, and it, he shaves, but then the hair just grows back because he's where he's a werewolf now, so he can't really shave. Which I kind I kind of like that little tiny touch there. So what happens is he got captured after the bar thing. With the fuzzy handcuffs by um, by Jonathan Cherry Willie, and and and, and if, I like Jonathan Cherry has some fun lines of dialogue. One of them he has here is you know he's handcuffed. He's like, so like, what, what what am I doing? What what are you doing? It's like hey hey hey, just, that's all I had. Those are the only handcuffs I had, man. Nothing nothing. I'm not not you know I'm not doing anything crazy. The only handcuffs that I had, and uh, so I thought that was kind of funny. And pretty much what happens is, um, it's a very short movie. It's 79 minutes, so this won't be a very long review because it's it's very straightforward. And I really liked it because of that. It's a very entertaining movie. Um, so Willie decides to record him on his next transformation. He forget he actually regrets the press record and one of it. So he ends up finally remembers to do it just the last minute before the wolf head rips through Lou's face. And then he's a werewolf and he's locked in the cell. And the first thing he asks, he asks Willie for, he's like, drink, drink. He's like, okay, okay, all right, all right, Lou, okay. <laughs> he gives him some uh, a, a Kentucky bird. He gives him some, basically some alcohol, liquor, and he's a werewolf. He's chugging the liquor, and and then he's like, Do donuts. He's like, donuts? Come on, man, really? Donuts? Okay. <laughs> And then I, ha I really when when then of course he decides he's gonna go out and be a cop, be a wolf cop. And of course Willie's like, "Oh come on, man, what are you doing?" He answers the phone. Uh, 
uh, robbery. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then he, he suits up in his, in his sheriff outfit with a gun and everything, gets his police car as a werewolf. And of course, Billy's like, come on, man, I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, you're a wolf, man. You're not a cop. It's like, I'm a wolf cop. You know, and then he goes in. And he drives. He goes to the liquor store where these piggy, these guys in pig masks are robbing the place and causing trouble in this small town. And he shows up, and I, it, it's, the film makes an obvious reference to RoboCop, which I have to love. And you know, because I'm a huge fan of RoboCop. And so what happens is the Wolf Cop shows up, and beats the shit out of these piggy guys, and one guy's got a shotgun. And when he sees the Wolf Cop at first, he's like, "Fuck me," <laughs> which is totally a reference to RoboCop. If it wasn't, I, I, it, I, I'd be surprised. I seriously would be surprised. So I was like, fuck me. It's like, what the hell are you? I'm a cop. A wolf cop. And, and then there's like one, one scene too where he starts, he first gets into the, into the liquor, into the store, liquor store while it's getting, getting robbed. And he's like, what the hell is going on here? It's like, here comes the fuzz. It's like, what the hell are you? The fuzz. That's actually what he said. He said, what the hell are you? The fuzz. Uh, you know. And then he, he he stops the robbers and then actually love the clerk behind the counter. He's like, thank you, officer. <laughs> and, then, and then what happens is after he stops the robbery, then there's an auto part. There's like an auto part, auto body detail store right in that shop, net right next to the liquor liquor store, liquor donut store. It's called Liquor Donuts. It really is called Liquor Donuts store. And and uh, the wolf cop, wolf cop turns to the Willow. He's like, and and Willow's like, oh you want, oh you want to do what you want to go in there and, and uh, you know do some 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 work. All right, all right, let's do it. So, so then it just cuts literally to them, Willie and, and and Wolf Cop just decking out his old his police car and turning it into a wolf mobile, <laughs> complete with a W on the front of it, and it looks awesome. And the soundtrack I really really liked for this film as well is totally eighties and totally awesome. The soundtrack by Shooting Guns I think is what they're called. The band is called and really fit the film like a glove and so they go then you have this really fun action sequence where wolf cop and willie they literally crash th through this meth barn where there's a bunch of these bad guys and wolf cop just fucking lays waste to them shooting them beating the shit out of these guys slashes a dude in the face, decapitates one guy, literally rips off this dude, the, the skin off of this dude's, one of these uh, meth dealer uh, bad guy's faces, and it flies off on, onto the windshield of the of the Wolfmobile, and Willie's in there, and the, the windshield wipers turn on and start wiping the face all over the windshield, and Willie's over goes, ew, come on, man, come on, ew! And you know, he's just, and it was great effects too. It rips the dude's face off, and then later in the segment, later in this whole sequence, which is one of my favorite segments of the whole film, is actually before he even starts kicking ass. It's another reference to RoboCop, where he barrels through the Wolfmobile, barrels through the meth barn, and then the door. You see a shot where the police, the, the Wolfmobile's door opens up, and then you see Wolf Cop's lower, you know, leg and his foot go down you know, hit the ground, which is totally a reference to when Robocop first made his first, you know, appearance, you know, when he started on patrol, opens the door, the foot goes down first, you know, but for the rest, you know, his right leg or whatever, and his foot go down, and then the rest of his body comes out of the car, that's what happens here with Wolf Cop, which is, was just awesome, and he rips off the dude's face, and then the guy with no face shows up later, and, and literally just starts screaming at Willie while he's waiting in the Wolfmobile, he just shows up, all this chaos is going on, and then the guy with no face just shows up and goes, "Ah!" And Willie's like, "Ah!" <laughs> I, 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 it was just, there's just so much awesomeness in this entire sequence, in this entire, in this, and it, I can't see. I'm stuttering because this movie is so awesome. Wolf Cop is so awesome, I can't even talk. And it's just way ways to these meth dealer, you know, bad guys in the meth bar, and it's just awesome. And of course, he, he fucks it up so badly that he's starting to light the meth. And Willie's like, come on, Lou, we gotta go, it's gonna blow. Huh? 
Send us here to blow. It's a meth. It's a meth place. full of meth, man. It's like a bomb. Let's go. And so it gets it. And the Wolfmobile, and they get out of there. And the whole place blows up, and it's a practical explosion, too. They literally do blow up the barn. And it was a big fireball, big explosion. It was great. And I, I like Lou, Lou, you know, Lou's, you know, driving the Wolfmobile some more. And, and, uh, and this is, and then, uh, Willie has this little thing where he's telling him, he's like, you know, you better lay low for a while, man. You know, there's a dude out there with no face. <laughs> he tore his face off, man. That's not cool. <laughs> and, and, and then what happens is he ends, he comes back to the police station and the really gorgeous chick uh, plays Jessica, but Sarah Lynn shows up, and you have a sex scene with Wolf Cop. I know it, it sounds ridiculous, and it is ridiculous, but it's it's so totally 80s, and it's it's hilarious. He's full werewolf, and it's totally an 80s style sex montage with Wolf Cop making love to Jessica. And it's got this really, I thought, I really, I like the song a lot in the background, too. It's really got a nice beat to it. It's totally an 80s song, too. And it was just like, this is awesome. And afterwards, they're done making love, and Wolf Cop's got a cigarette, you know, and some alcohol. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is awesome. And, and, uh, and, of course, then you find out Jessica isn't who she says she is. She tricked him, uh, put sleep, you know, put a bunch of tranquilizers in his, in his, his uh, drink, and so he passes out. And then this is where you find the sort of plot line where you find out that Lou is supposed to be, you know, sacrificed so these shapeshifters can live. And then you get like this finale where the shapeshifters, there's three of them, and they go up against Lou. Lou ends up getting helped out by his partner, uh, um, Tina, who comes up with a sniper rifle, shoots one of them, and... Um, they end up making it out and end up stopping the shapeshifters. And I really like this idea where Lou is a werewolf for like a, a eight minutes while the lunar eclipse is going on. So he's got just enough time for the wolf out and kick some ass and then go back to normal. And then the movie actually ends with, with a more cool opening, more cool music. And uh, then you have like after end credits, the scene where Wolf Cop shows up, beats the shit out of this guy who was kicking his dog earlier. And and I thought it was pretty funny. And then it promises Wolf Cop 2, which I'm like, yes! Wolf Cop 2, please! More Wolf Cop. Because Wolf Cop was badass. Wolf Cop was an awesome movie. Um, but yeah, it might not seem like much, but you gotta see it. I mean, you gotta see it to, to truly, you know, see the awesomeness for yourself that is Wolf Cop. I mean, he's just fucking up people. The meth barn scene that... Was one of my it was one of my favorite scenes in in a film that I've seen this year. It was just so much fun, and uh, the practical effects were really good for such a low budget. And I actually want to find who did them, just to just to make sure I give them the proper credit that that they deserve. Um, I think it's uh, Emerson Ziffel. Yeah, Emerson Ziffel. Did an amazing job with special effects makeup uh, for you know the low budget that that he had, and the sc the score is by. I mean, there's some effects that you can tell they're low budget, but it works. I mean, they didn't have a lot of money to work with, so I'm glad that they went all out anyway. We don't have a lot of work lot to work with, but we're gonna go all out anyway. Budget be damned. not giving me the this the the I, th I I really I think it is shooting guns though I definitely think it is shooting guns but they're not really telling me on the IMDB credits but anyway just a really fun movie Wolf Cop I mean it, it might you know like like I said uh, it, I pretty much said the entire plot but uh, I said I was gonna do you know I can't help myself with spoilers sometimes but um, I still think it's worth a watch. If you're a big fan of this, these 80s style action horror comedies, you got to give this a look. If you like Dead Heat with Joe Piscopo and Treat Williams, I think you might enjoy this. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's every at the end of the day, it's up to you. Um, so don't take my word for it. If, if this sounds awesome to you, sounds like work with a look, sounds like it's worth a look, give it a look. Because 
for me personally, Wolf Cop was a howling good time. I really love this movie. It's one of my favorite films of the year. Very enjoyable, very fun, uh, very entertaining, fast-paced, witty, fun, and somewhat innovative uh, horror action comedy. This is the first film I've ever seen that has a werewolf cop. At least they did something different here. And uh, just solidified my hope for the independent uh, horror genre. You know, for independent horror films. So majority of the best horror films I've seen this year, you could honestly consider them to be independent, independently made and not made by major studios. So that gives me a little bit of hope for the horror genre, but only in the independent um, category. Not in the mainstream, because there isn't much. But anyway, yeah, Wolf Cop was badass. It was awesome. Wolf Cop kicked ass. And uh, he took names, and he, it, it was just such a fun movie. It was just a lot of fun to watch. So anyway, um, don't know what else to say about Wolf Cop, except it was rated a five star. I'm mean, even five. I loved it that much. It's 79 minutes. It goes by really quick. It's got an interesting enough, engaging enough plot. It's got good performances by the cast. It's got some really great makeup effects for such a low budget. Uh, really fun, a really fun 80s vibe to it. And overall, it's just a really, I thought it was a great film uh, for what it was. But anyway, thank you for watching my review of Wolf Cop. And I will see you guys later. See ya.